to let everybody, because I've gotten several emails that people are trying to get, uh, get a question in. If you're trying to ask a question, raise your hand so we can see you and that we can uh, acknowledge you and get you there. Uh, we're going to talk about making a bunch of splits tonight. Uh, I put packages in one month ago, and I let some of them just get fat. And we went through some tonight. I had a five-frame box. We put a two-pound package in one month ago. There's three frames in total of 27 cells that's ready. Actually, they're hatching right now. I cut some out and moved them into different boxes. So if you're wanting to make numbers, putting a package in a five-frame nuke and feeding it, it will grow and make cells. And the last two and a half to three weeks, we haven't even been feeding. There's so much honey coming in now. If you're wanting to increase, now's the time to do it. They're making cells without even trying right now. So something to think about. All right, we're going to open up for questions. Okay, first up is Chris. Uh, go ahead, Chris. Go ahead, Chris. I'm going to, be add, I'm going to add a box on tomorrow to my hives out there. Do you recommend that I checkerboard them like you do on the videos? Are you trying to make honey or are you trying to make bees? I'm just trying to grow the hive. I've only got one box. Well, checkerboarding them is going to give you some more room. They're not going to make no cells, but if you keep them in one single box, they're going to make cells. And, you know, the easiest thing to do if you're not trying to make numbers real fast is take a frame. It's got a cell or two and just move it to another box. Shake okay. you a few extra bees and you can grow them that way. It's a lot yeah, safer just, to do that. I'm just trying to expand them. Um, they're getting a little crowded right now. I'm just going to add a box and, and do the uh, checkerboarding. One hive, the only one you got? I got two. You got two? Okay. It's always best to have at least two, but you probably want to try for four. You know, if you got the equipment, now's the time yeah. to start splitting. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Okay. Next, next up is Joe. Go ahead, Joe. Joe May. He must uh, unhook his mic. <laughs> yeah, we'll come back to you. Uh, Pat, go ahead, Pat. Yeah, good evening. Good um, evening. First of all, for the guy that was talking about his two hives and one was weaker than the other one, about midday, go out and switch locations. The foragers will come back and it'll bump up your population and help them out with food supplies too. And as long as they're bringing food in, they'll let them in with no problem. So it won't cause any problems in the hive. But my question is, Don, we're trying to build up uh, nukes and get queen cells. And when we put them in there and get them all going, they fill up the box full of honey before the queen can lay very much. <laughs> well, if you're getting a box that's bringing a lot of honey, and we're, we're running across that on some of our locations, we we'll actually have to checkerboard them or pull the frames of honey out. Some on our locations right now, the honey is coming in so much, we're three boxes high, three deeps high. Yeah. And those are the boxes that what we're doing is going through the frames one by one. And if there's too much drone combing, we move it all the way up to the top box and let them fill it out with honey cap it, and then we'll either cut it out or extract it. And when they get 50% of drone combing there, it's a whole lot quicker just to cut the comb out and then let it drain out and then just put new starter strips in. That yeah, seems we, to work okay. the best for us. We've done some of the cutting out the drone comb, but um, they're just bringing in honey so hot and heavy. Uh, the tulip poplars are blooming here right now and it yeah. seems to be backing up everywhere. Yeah, it's, it's, it's going <laughs> everywhere. But you should be, uh, you should be making cells. You might try pulling one frame out and setting a framing that's got just a starter strip, and put it directly in the middle. That way the heat is in the middle and that's where they're gonna draw it out the fastest. And sometimes it'll encourage them to make cells, sometimes it won't. Bees are just gonna be doing bees. <laughs> sometimes you want them to make cells and they won't, and then if you don't want them, they're on all the frames. So you yeah, just gotta play week, with whatever's going. Yeah, last week we had uh, queen cells coming out of our ears. This week, they're all honey-bound, so. <laughs> well, you know, I thought I'd mention about packages. Uh, they're brand-new queens in packages, and it's highly 
unsuitable uh, for bees to make queen cells on a package, you know, a month old. But when you get a heavy honey flow and conditions are just right out there, they'll make them. I was surprised there's so many cells. And we actually caught one of the virgins and left the virgin in the hive that had all the cells. We took every frame out that had cells on it and just left the frame of honey and put back two more strips, uh, two more frames of starter strips. And, you know, I didn't look hard in the box. I just picked a virgin queen up and set her on the bottom of the box and let her walk around. But it's something to look at when you think they're not going to swarm on packages. They'll, they'll surprise you. They'll start swarming. Okay. Can you hear me now, guys? Yeah, we can hear you, Jeff. Let me go ahead or no? Yeah, go ahead. Hey, I got some virgins back that uh, started uh, mated. And they started laying. They laid three days in there, several of them, and they, they're superseding them. Have I done something wrong or just nature? It's just nature. Sometimes they, that's just what happens. Could be they could have not gotten mated good or, you know, something could have happened. Nothing is locked down in stone in beekeeping. I've been doing it 65 years, and I learn new things just about every year. Every year the flow is different. Every year the pattern for making queens is different. Yeah. Okay. Well, I thought maybe something I'd done, but I, you know, just done like I always do, and they've come yeah. back, made it, and laid eggs, and they made queen cells again. So yep. Okay. Well, thanks. make use of all the cells you can. Oh, I will. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Next up is Row. Go ahead. Go ahead. Row. Uh, yeah. Come me with my mouth full. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, couple of questions we our hive that we were having so much trouble with she finally everything is looking better we just closed that up right before the chat started and um you know she was laying eggs but they didn't seem to be hatching and but now they are she's got about half a frame that look like larva you know that are they're progressing into larva but there are two frames that are laid full of eggs but the the cells are completely dry, and those eggs are falling like down to the bottom of the cells. Uh, should we pull those frames out of there? Or are they going to clean that out on their own? Or it sounds like your population's drifting from one hive to another, and you don't have enough bees in there. They either got dried or they got chilled. They got dried. You they know, definitely dried. Is but the now population low? It it was, but now it's picked back up. I don't know if they drifted back. We were going to relocate them today. We were going to swap their positions, just like. Um, the lady before was talking about, but um, when we opened them up, it, they're still lower than the other one, but they, they're they doing much better, twice as good as they were. And we did, like you said, we put a big colored flag on the front, of both one orange and one green. You have the entrances reduced? Yes. With the weaker hive, we have the entrance reduced down to one inch. And the other one, the entrance reducer has a, a larger opening if you turn it. You know, it, ha it has a, I think the other one's like, two and a half inches or something. That's what we put the stronger hive because it's just going gangbusters. I um, would use uh, the same size for both of them. Same you size can tell when you need to get the bigger size, there'll be a traffic jam at the front of the entrance. When they can't get in and out fast enough, they'll just sit there for a second. And that's an indication you get a lot a wider, you know, opening. Okay. The, my, other, my second question is for the stronger hive, which I feel like is going to be the first one probably to give us the queen cells. Um, they've almost completely drawn it out now, but they seem to have a lot more honey than they do uh, uh, brood. They have two frames of brood, but the rest is pretty much mostly honey for the most part. There's some brood scattered in there. <laughs> Are you feeding them? them? Yes. And you, there's no honey flow where you're at? There I'm is surprised they take it. They, they are taking it, but not as fast as they were when we first got the package. They're, it's taken them about four days. We're feed, we're, the, the feeder holds a, a quart and a half, probably, and it's taken them about four days to drink that. So they are taking it, but slowly. The, my question was, should I take the frames out that have honey on them and replace them with starter strips so maybe they'll lay in those? Or just... No, I wouldn't, I wouldn't do that there. Okay. So it, it's okay to let them make queen cells with uh, – is, is honey bound okay to make them make queen cells, or should we let them get brood bound, I guess is what I'm asking. Does it make a difference? It doesn't really make a difference. When there's no place to lay, when you get honey bound or brood bound, too much brooding there, they start making cells. 
let nature kind of work its own way, you know. Okay. All right. I guess that's my uh, only question. We built uh, uh, eight boxes today, uh, five frame nuke boxes, and we built a bunch of mating nukes too. So we're uh, we're set to go as soon as the bees catch up. <laughs> well, it takes some time. Sometime. Yeah. Yeah. We're we're happy. I was. I, I pictures. We saw both queens. That was the other odd thing. Our queen that looked so small uh, when we first spotted her last time. In the last five days, she's doubled in size. Oh she, yeah. yeah. It, it expanded. She expanded. Like before, we were still arguing over whether she was actually the queen because her tail was not quite, not very much bigger at all. You know, this time she's huge. I mean, you open the box, she's the first thing you spot. So, well. All queens are going to start out fairly small if you if they're in a package or if you buy them in a nuke. You know, the longer they are laying, the bigger they're going to get. Yeah. Most queens is not going to swell up to any size for at least a month, five weeks, you know, in that area. Okay. All right. Thank, thank you very okay. much. Okay. okay. Next up is Leah. Go ahead, Leah. Hey, Don. I've got a feeder on my hive. Um because we've been having quite a bit of rain. They're still, on the days where it, it, it rains, they're taking more feed. But I'm having a problem with mold on the inside of my lid. I've got water on one side and then syrup, like a little better than a two to one, um, because the three to one kept crystallizing on me. Um, do I need to be concerned about that mold on the inside of the lid? Do you um, have your feeders uh, vented? Yeah, I've got about a one inch um, vent hole at the top of the cover. Do I need to add more vents on that? Is it one of the high top feeders plans that we got from us? No, it's a man lake feeder, and then I've made um, out of two by fours a frame to go on top of it with plywood on the top, and so I've got um, uh, like a rabbit cut all the way around in the two by fours to set on top of that, and then I've got a, a one inch hole drilled in the inside. I would drill a couple more holes in there. You're, you're probably not getting enough ventilation. The feeder plans that we got, we use two. Uh, holes in the back one inch holes or inch and an eighth holes okay and that it sounds like there's the the moisture just condensating on your lid okay all right and then um my my hives um for my disastrous install i've got that one hive it's coming along but it's still struggling um i should have based on everything's going both hives should be hatching these next week sometime um, would it be okay once the numbers get up a little bit bigger to put a fruit, a fruit, a frame of brood in the, the weaker hives, or would you leave them alone for now? If you're going to do that, you need to take a frame and actually watch the bees hatching, watch them cut themselves out and shake all the bees off and then put it into the weaker hive. Make okay. sure you get at least, I would say 90% of them and look at them. You can tell. Sometimes the nurse bees are off color or dusty looking. Those bees you could transfer them into a hive with a queen, but if you've got some field bees on there, they're going to be more shinier and the color is more pronounced. Okay. If you get too many of those, in, they could kill that queen. Okay. All or right. if you've got a brush, I mean, you know, some, some people have these big brushes they sell at the bee companies. You can do that, but I don't recommend brushes because usually when you brush bees they get aggravated and they'll sting you more likely okay all right fair enough thanks okay, okay Todd go ahead hey Don a uh, hey. question for you in reference to the mini nukes um, I've probably got about 15 or so set up and had cells going them they came out of the cells fine and I'm only getting about 50 percent of the queens back what type of ratio do you normally get back in the hive after mating? This time of the year, depend, what we like to do is set them up in a thicket of a tree. They get more cover when they fly out. If you got them out in the open, they're actually sitting ducks for, you know, dragonflies, purple martins, you know, different hornets get them. But right now, you should be getting about an 85 to 90% return. Okay, I may need to move them because they are out in the open, but uh, yeah. I'm getting about 50% of them coming back right now. Yeah. Well, okay. if you get them in, you know, you've been to the yard I've got here. You yeah. see, we got them up in the thicket of the trees. It gives them a little cover, and your uh, purple martins and your dragonflies don't seem to fly through that area as much as they do in the open. And okay. we had a problem several years back. We had a bunch of mating nukes in a low spot, and it was open. And we had the same problem. We was getting 40, 50, sometimes 55% back. 
Okay. Probably need to move them in. All right, thanks. Okay, Dan W5MML. Go ahead. Yes. Uh, first, I want to say to Pat, I will call you. And uh, Don, um, I have a question for you. Okay. Uh, regarding um, when I changed from my nuke over to a uh, full-size hive, uh, they don't even look, them, of course, on a, on a top bar. Um, will there be a problem with that, do you think? You're changing uh, from a five-frame nuke to a, a, a full-size hive? I'm changing from a top bar nuke, which is actually stop bars right now, to oh, a as, uh, 30. There, there's a few people out there that do it. Uh, I, you know, I've seen several of them do them. Uh, Phil Chandler's one. I've seen him take brand new frames and take a, a hedge clipper or a pruning shears and cut the sidebars off. And I just cringe when I see stuff like that. That's, you're better off to start with a Langstroth hive and, and go that way. If you just want one hive and expect to lose your bees a lot, I mean, top bar hive, you know, there's hard to inspect them. It's hard to, to manage them. It's just, you just got to do, to me, it's not commercially advantageous to me. For what the effort that you put in one top bar hive, I can run 50 hives <clears throat> with less headache. I don't intend to go that big. It's a, a hobby. Well, if it's a hobby and you want to put up with it, I mean, there's disadvantages to it. I mean, I had a lady come up here a few days ago, and she's got one, and it's all I heard from her. Every time she inspects it, the comb's falling on the ground, and she's losing queens. I said, you know, you've got to go one way or the other. Mm. You can try picking Apparently. them up and vertically, you know, rolling them so that, you know, you can look that way. You can't mm -hmm. lean them sideways to look at them. you got to, just like natural draw comb, there's strength yeah. one way and there's no strength the other way. I understand. Okay, thank you. Okay, okay Ernest is next. Go ahead, Ernest. Uh, yes, uh, can you hear me, Don? Yeah, I hear you. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I tried to, with the uh, queens. I got queen cells. Went over to my son's, and uh, he has a ten frame uh, double, and he had all kinds of queen cells. So he didn't want them. So I cut them out and brought them home, and I put them in the uh, the uh, small uh, boxes, and I put honey with it, and I put bees, but. Apparently, I didn't get enough bees, and uh, the bees I got went back, so I ended up it wasn't successful. So I had about six of them I, I didn't uh, didn't take. So how many? How much size box was you putting them in, and how many bees did you put in? Well, I I, I got uh, one that had the brood on it, and I shook all of them off in it. Well, you they, they, you need to get nurse bees. How old is the hive that you're shaking the bees from? Well, I've had them over, over the winter, you know, they're... You need to... Do you wear a veil when you're shaking these bees and stuff? Yeah, yeah. You have to kind of look sideways at the bees, and you might have to shake two frames in there. What we do is a lot of times we turn the lid upside down in front of the hive, and we'll shake one or two frames because you're going to get at least 50% fly back. If you look at them... The nurse bees are going to be the dusty looking ones. They're going to be the ones that the color's not very pronounced. So those are the ones you want. And you have to shake enough in there. All you need to do is put a frame of honey in there and that queen cell. If you didn't damage that queen cell, they'll go right to it. Now, when you cut your queen cell out, was you cutting it out of uh, a frame that had wood and wax or was it a plastic frame? No, it was the wooden wax, but it had wires, and we had to cut the wires, and I cut a good ways around it, so I didn't didn't damage it. Usually, so. if you cut wide enough, uh, well, you got wires in there, you're going to have to cut a plug about two inches and be very careful how you uh, cut it, and a lot of people damage it just by cutting. You have to put your fingers on the back side and support the comb, and then rinse your knife off real good, have it wet and slippery with no no wax on it, and take short little strokes back and forth like you're sawing. Don't try to take big cuts because it flexes your comb. And just a little bit of flexing will damage that cell unless it's ready to hatch within 24 hours. Then they could take a little bit more beating. 
Well, now, one the of them. Cells, might... They should have been brown looking with a little bit of beige look at the end where they thinned them out. Those are ripe cells. They'll hatch usually within 24 hours. Well, one hatched in, in the container I had, I opened it up, and it was walking around in there. It already had. So I put it in a, uh, a little uh, a con loop, uh, queen container. And I tuck it and put it in another hive and left it overnight, and they seemed to be accepting it. So then I opened it up and let it uh, let it go in. Usually queens, if they hatch like that, you can let them walk right on in. There's no pheromones on them. There, there's, you know, it's like a baby. A baby don't have a lot of smell to it until they get a, you know, six months, eight months. They start getting a little smell to them. But I did do uh, several one frame uh, splits for my uh, hives. And they seem to be doing well. So, uh, it's guess, not I, rocket science. It's just practice, practice techniques. And eventually you're going to get a 90, 99% take on them. It just practice it a little bit. And you say it's uh, good to put those back in the uh, woods or someplace, not out in the open then, uh, as far as getting them to return. Uh, I think you have better luck, luck with them returning when you've got a, a thicket, pine thicket, you know. Mm -hmm. We have some in open, and we have some in thickets, and the ones that's got trees and brush and stuff, they seem to do a lot better. And another thing I wanted to ask you, uh, the uh, uh, boxes I've been making, is it all right to, to put caulking around them uh, if there's uh, any openings? For you the, don't uh, need to caulk feeder? them. Uh, are you making feeders for, what are you putting, you're making splits in a standard five-frame nuke, or are you making mini nukes? Well, I've got both, and I think the five-frame nukes will work better because I can put the feeders right on top of them yeah. to feed them, you know. If you're going to use the mini nukes, the probably the easiest thing for you to build is just get a flat lid, like a migratory lid, eight inches wide and just a little three-quarter in each end. And just get you a one-inch bit and drill a hole in it. And use Powerade bottles. They are holed up to the sun. Some of your water bottles are so thin that after the sun hits them for a week or two, they deteriorate right down. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we use a lot of Powerade bottles. I'll show you the kind we use. I mean, they're strong. They're good for several years. They've okay. got a big lid. You just have to get you a, a good auger bit or a spade bit and drill that piece out. I made a jig back there where, for the drill press where you can knock them out pretty quick. That's the easiest way. Now, my son has built some feeders out of the milk jugs. They took a, a pattern off of our old style. They work good, but uh, it's a lot more cut and it takes more time where a spade bit, you can knock out a bunch of those and what we do is just take an eight penny nail and drive it through the lid on that bottle there, that drink bottle, and just pull it back out. It works fine. That don't let uh, rain water get in around that bottle and down in the hive? Not really. Uh, it's a pretty snug fit. Okay, well, I'll try that. Uh, I had the eight inch uh, migratory covers and that allowed rain to come in there. I guess it went alongside of it. So I made some bigger covers with sides on them for them now. Well, so. the telescoping lids, they, they stay flatter, but we use a, a scrap pieces of Advantech, and it stays flat no matter how long it's been soaked in water. But you shouldn't have to caulk any of your boxes. If you've got enough bees in there, they'll caulk it shut wherever there's cracks and stuff. Yeah, I was just thinking that the ants always gets in there. So if well, I cover... Every There's, little place, there won't be no place for them to, to hide. That's just nature. You're dealing with nature. And some people worry about little black ants, some are little brown ants. It's just nature. You know, if you let it bother you, it's going to aggravate you all day long. They coexist. I've got hives out there where feeders are not built exactly like they are. And there's a bunch, probably a good handful of little brown ants. You could put cinnamon in there, but I don't let it bother me. Like my ground, I got fire ant hills all over. I don't let it bother me. Mm -hmm. It controls the high beetles. Nature will take care of nature, but when you start altering it, then you start running into more problems. Okay. Well, that's about all I have. Okay. Uh, thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, next up is John R. Go ahead, John. Go ahead. 
Hey, Don. Hey. Ken, you may have already answered this, but I've got a couple five frame nukes that have got them in frame feeders in, so actually only three frames will fit in with the feeders. Mm -hmm. And they're just loaded with bees, and I've never seen a queen cell on them. Can there get to be too many bees in there and not enough something else going on to they won't produce a queen cell or should I thin them out, take frames out or? One so. thing I would do is uh, a frame feeder, we stopped using those probably 40 years ago. A uh, frame feeder, you have to open the hive up. And I know, if you, I hate if, them. If you're uh, Remember wearing I a veil, uh, the queen might run up on the top and I've seen queens get drowned in the things. Uh, a bottle, a drink bottle like that works good if you want to drill your lid. If you don't, a high top feeder it works a lot better. Uh, you've got to have a certain amount of bees in there for them to make cells. You know, it, it just depends. If they're crowded, they should make cells. Well, the reason I ask is back in the winter time when I had the two two uh, hives that survived the winter, and then later on in February or first of March got cold after they'd been out and got out of the bundle. They froze out, and in the winter time, I'd ordered a couple of bees, queens, and I never had any. I mean, the company never called me and told me there was I mean, email or nothing that they were coming. They just surprisingly showed up in my mailbox one day, and thank God I was home. So I pulled a frame out of them, each of them, and put them in an eight frame hive and uh, put the queens, new queens, in them. Now they both produced queen cells, but that was three weeks ago. They they had queen cells on them Thursday, but the five frames with just the three frames in them, I've never found a queen cell on them, and it's, I didn't know. I I'm if you remember, I'm the one that says they the damn catalogs away. <laughs> All you need them for is maybe frames or foundation, and throw them away and order your plans and do everything that way. All you do is spend a bunch of money ordering now these doggone catalogs. But if you had bees that went through the winter and then they end up dying on you, more than likely they either starved or they had moisture in that hive. No, they they we out here in Kansas it got warm in February, and they were going out flying around, come out of the bundle, bringing in pollen. And I thought everything was great. And we had one weekend got down to twelve or thirteen degrees for like two nights, three nights in a row. And it killed every one of them. They chilled out, chilled them. There's still plenty of food in it, plenty of everything, but they just froze. It was out of I I attributed it just got out of the out of the bundle. And uh it killed them. But usually, you know, I've had people <coughs> call me from Minnesota, an upper part of Michigan, with two frames or two and a half frames of bees and go through a cold winter. As long as the bees are dry and they got food in there. That's why we're running all five frame stuff, and a lot of people up north are doing the same thing. You confine the heat down, pull your honey off, and you can always feed it back. You know, if you get a little thin on your stores. No, I had plenty of honey in them, and like I said, they they survived. We had fifteen, sixteen below, and fifty mile, fifty you know, wind chills, minus fifty wind chills. Mm -hmm. They survived all that, but in February, like I said, it got warm, and they come out, and started flying around, and Brain in pollen and everything. They had a cold front come through and it killed every one of them. That's the only so, thing I could attribute because everything else is fine. But it sounds like they started brooding up because if they're bringing pollen in, they're starting to brood up and they might expand it out and try to cover it and then that, that's probably what done them in. I think that's because they were, they were dead. I mean, yeah. they warmed up and three, four, five days later, I said, well, I don't see any bees flying around. I went over and looked and they were all in there dead. So, like I said, I'd ordered a couple queens anyway from Kelly's, and they didn't notify me at all that they was shipping them. I'd even forgot I'd ordered them because I figured I'd split them two hives this spring sometime. Well, they showed up, and I was kind of in a panic and running around and getting uh, – had a couple eight-frame boxes. I put frames in them and put them queens in them and pulled a frame of bees out of each one of them nukes, and now they made queen cells. And one of them Thursday had had a clump of four cells, and two of them are already open, and two of them are closed. So I don't know. I should have lamped it to see if there were still live queens in there. They were dead, but I cut well, it out, put it in another nuke. 
if they're closed and you know if you got one that's hatched and you got a good hole on the bottom nice round right. hole you got to queen out and as long as the other cells are not cut on the side uh the queens are usually good well they were other things look at the bees the bees will be on them if the bees yeah. are all around them they're in a good cells just cut them out and they'll hatch yeah, well, I'll, I'll find out in a couple of days because I put them in another nuke over here that didn't have a queen in it. Yeah. And that's the ones I brought back from the cutout. I had some that wouldn't fit in the 10 frame or 8 frame box I had. And I put them in this 5 frame nuke. And so there it's in there, and I'll know in a few days whether there's still live queens in them or not. But I was just wondering if, because even after I pulled them frames out of them 3 frames with the worthless feeders in them, uh, when I checked them again Thursday, man, they're just loaded again with bees. I mean, just full. I pulled that full, feeder full. out of there, and I would just put a frame in its place. Should I just take a frame out every once in a while? Uh, if you're wanting to make cells, I would put the frame back, replace that feeder with another frame, and when they get crowded, they're going to make cells. That's just a natural thing. Yeah. Well, like I said, I got three of them in there, and they're they're just loaded with bees. I mean, they're you full. have plenty of cells then. So that I have never seen a queen cell. <laughs> and that's why it stumps me. I can't figure that out. That's why I was asking. You got pollen coming in. They should be making cells. Well, there uh, should be a little bit of pollen. We had a pretty good flowery spring, and then it's kind of died down now again. And But they're starting to get some more flowers around here now, of course, that probably killed this weekend. We were sitting here about 32 degrees tonight and supposed to get five inches of snow. So I hope I make it through this cold spell. That's your problem right there. You're fluctuating. If it starts dropping down below 55, you know, you're not going to make cells. If you well, do get cells, they're not going to hatch. They're going to chill out. That's probably – you just answered my question there. That was my next question because we'll have a week of warm weather and then a week of cold weather, and we're not still steady warm. Once it stabilizes, you should be in good shape. Okay. Well, that's a good life in Kansas, so. <laughs> <laughs> Out here in the desert, you never know what you're going to get. Yeah. Like I said, we're catching heck this weekend, so. Uh, had about four inches of snow on the ground this morning. Most of it melted today and supposed to get another five to eight tonight, so. We'll see. I hope, I hope by Monday I still got bees. <laughs> if you run out, I can always ship you some. <laughs> yeah, I didn't think you'd ship this far. I would have ordered them. <laughs> well, I got way to ships for me. Yeah. All right. Well, that's my question. Okay. I think. Okay. Next up is Anthony. Go ahead, Anthony. Uh, Don, after you do a split, how far apart do you need to keep those hives after you do a split? I got mine seven to ten inches apart. Really? Okay. Yeah. All right. Let me ask you another quick question. The first couple of weeks I had these bees, I tried to give them uh, syrup, but I didn't really have a, a feeder. So I took a dish, I put white landscape rocks in it, put the syrup in there, and they didn't seem to pay any attention to it. Then I got a frame feeder, I don't know, a week and a half ago, the plastic one that's only about five inches deep, it's got a ladder inside it. And I put syrup in there, and they'll they'll drink that whole thing in one day. Um, and there's a heavy heavy flow on here, um, a lot. But they'll still drink a whole uh, feeder of water in a day. And that was syrup. And then someone else recommended try giving them just plain water and see if they'll take the water. And when I looked yesterday, they had taken about half of the water. Do you feed, give your bees water all the time? If it's hot outside and you're wanting to make honey, yeah, keep a, a feeder on the top of just plain water. Because yeah. if you stop and think about it, all the bees in that hive, the only ones getting water is the one that fly out and get it. So they're wasting time hauling water back to the ones that yeah. don't fly. That's, that's exactly why, what I thought. So, that's why, uh, you know, when I tell people, put water on there, you'll make a gallon to three gallons more honey. It's for that simple reason. The young bees can't fly. But if it's there, they can come up and get a drink, and all the bees can fly or haul a nectar. That's the yeah. simplest way you make honey. 
Okay, great. Plain, ordinary water. Okay, that's all I have for right now. Let's okay. Go ahead and let the next one get a question. Okay, Lee, go ahead. Hey, Don, how are you? Hey. Okay. Hey, um, I just can't express the um, how good it was to come over and spend the day with you. Everything that I learned, even the little bitty things from that garden hose being shot at me, um, <laughs> <laughs> it was just um, – it's just changed the way I do things. Everything from – Going in the hive with my hive tools, separating them, you know, finding my queen, knowing when to do change outs. All that stuff is just invaluable, the time spent over that day. Um, but my question is, I've got a failing, or appears to be a failing queen, because they'll make, queen, they'll make cells when they're not really full to supersede her. I can move her to another box with some bees, and they'll do it again. But she lays eggs for them to do it. Um, how and she the the bees that she produces they're all real gentle. Um, the the queens that she produces seem to they're coming back mated fine. They're laying good. What would you think about putting her in a mating nuke and leapfrogging her instead of just leaving her in a hive? Why do you keep moving the queen? You should be moving frames, not the queen. But we've I've done that. I tried it two ways to see if maybe that they wouldn't supersede her if I if I got her to do something else, and they still do. Well, are you treating for mites? No, I mean, not necess no, not in that hive. I mean, I'm moving her, so there should be a brood break. Not necessarily. If the bees that's in the hive already have mites on them, are you checking them really close? Yeah, I mean, there's nothing in any drones or anything. Um, I, 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 hadn't, I hadn't done a sugar shake or anything um, because everybody just seems to be healthy, and I don't see any, any distress. Yeah, well... Maybe they just want to make queen cells. I mean, take advantage of it. I one, am. one guy says, you know, they can't make queen cells, and you got too many. I mean, build you some boxes, put them to use. That's what we're doing. It's just yeah. it's getting ahead of me. So, all right, thanks. Okay. Uh, next up is John Roten. Uh, go ahead, John. Hey, Don. Hey. Hey, listen, I've got some queen cells that's supposed to hatch out either – tomorrow or Monday, and uh, I was going to pull in a mate nuke, but I've got a swarm that I caught, and I've lost the queen with them, a big swarm. I, I assume I'll be better off to hatch those queens out, get them mated before I try to put one in there, and I just put that swarm in last Wednesday. Are, are they going to be all right for a week or so? You mean the swarm? Yes, they're in a box. Well, And they're did you building wax. Did you go through the swarm? Did you dump them in directly into the box? Well, I I tried to dump them in the box. Uh, what I, when I dumped them in, I had a five frame box and it wasn't near enough. I mean, they went all over the ground around it, so I left it and went and got a bigger box where they were all on the side of it thin. And I just moved the frames I had in there and dumped the rest of them in there. But they had already built a bunch of comb in, in the in the box I dumped them out of, and so I, I never found it. Well, you would never dump a, a swarm into a box. Either you bump them underneath a limb or something with a bucket and dump them in front of your box with a lid on well, it. Well, I, I had them caught in a swarm, one of those pots. Oh, well. They, you, they, they were thick. I would have dumped them in front of the nuke box. I would have put them in a nuke box, and I'd have let them start walking in, and I kept moving it back into it. More than likely, you had at least two to three queens in that swarm. Well, they had been in that box for over a week already. Well, it's a swarm trap. Oh, you put them in the swarm trap and they just That's went in I there. I caught them in. I caught oh, them oh. in. And I tried to transfer them. Yeah. Well, but I didn't find her. If you got comb in there in the, a swarm box, more than likely she's a young queen and she's probably running faster than you can turn the frames. <laughs> well, Are they quiet? I went and looked. No, they're noisy. Well, so I, I looked again today. There's no eggs. You know, I, there was eggs and larvae on some of the cone that I took out, and I put some in, and there's no eggs. I even put a – pretty sure she wasn't in there when I'd done that. I, I'd looked enough that I couldn't find her, so I put a, a frame that had some eggs in it, yeah. and they didn't do anything with them either. Well, you might have a queen in there. I looked today. I sure didn't see nothing. I didn't see no eggs or anything in there. Usually a swarm, you know, you shouldn't have any problem, especially in a bait box. Mm -hmm. You know, if you put another frame in the center, 
Uh, did you tie comb in there, or do you use frames that had drawn out wax in it? Uh, I used both, but I put some of their cone in there with rubber bands. I wouldn't have done that. You wouldn't have done that? No. Well, because, I can take it back out. Uh, because that there is, runs the highest risk of getting wax moth because it's old cone. Oh, no, it's all new cone that they just built within a no, week. No, the old cone. The old comb that you tied in with rubber bands, I'd have never done that. That's what I was saying. It was brand new. Oh, See, what, I, would you I brush had, it off? I had to cut it out of the inside of that swarm box. Oh, oh, oh. And it was all, all white wax. They had just built it within a week. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, I, I'm pretty sure I don't got her. I just need to know, and my best bet is to, to get one of these queens mated and then put her in there and leave her in a box for about three days a queen cage before I turn her loose? I, yeah, you could do that, but I would put a frame of eggs in there. That's the way I would you do would? That's okay. the way I'd go. Okay. Well, I'll try that again. They didn't do anything with the frame I put in there Wednesday afternoon. Did you pull it from a hive close by? I pulled it from one here at the house, and that's probably a, a little over two miles from here where that's at. How hot was it? Did it get overheated, or did it have bees on it? No, it was a nice day that day, and... Uh, when you uh, moved the frame, yeah, you I had, had bees, bees on, on it? it. Yeah, yeah. I pulled it out with the bees on it and set it in the box and hauled the a ten frame box in there because I had a five frame and it wasn't enough to hold all the bees. Now, if you set that frame in the box with those bees, might have killed your queen right there. If you're going to do that again, the best thing to do is shake all the bees off in front of the hive or on the ground and then set uh -huh. that framing. If they let those bees come in, it would run less risk of killing the queen. Oh, really? Yeah. So I should have shook the bees on that frame off. That's what I would have done. Oh, okay. Okay. Because if those bees don't like that queen, the first uh -huh. thing they're going to do is ball her, kill her. Okay. Well, the, the bees never marched in the box at all when I had them there because I yeah. backed it up and I was actually guiding the bees toward it, trying to get yeah. them to go in. And then that's that's when I was pretty sure the queen wasn't in there, you know. And and they covered the whole box, you know, on the outside and it, the inside was even full. But there's little pods scattered around, so I thought, well, she may be in one of them, but I never could find her. Sometimes you get them and sometimes you don't. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Okay, next up is Ro. Go ahead, Ro. Uh, yeah, I have a question for uh, Joe May, if that's okay. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, he showed a uh, board that he was using as a queen bank, like uh, a board with a whole bunch of holes drilled in it and screen on one side. I was wondering if he could show that again, where I could get a screenshot of it. What what size are those holes? It's fun for grafting out of JB uh, Z cups. Okay, what what size did you make those holes to stick the cups in? You just made them the, the size of the JB Z cup? Nine sixteenths. Nine sixteenths. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. That's, that's all I had. I appreciate it. Okay, next up is Don. Uh, let me find you here. Go ahead, Don. Okay, I just wanted to tell Don that uh, your five-gallon bucket feeder works really great for me. And uh, the girls are drinking about a gallon a day. out of, out of a, uh, That was a three-pound box that came from you uh, through, uh, through the uh, local guy over here in uh, Wimberley, Texas. Oh, uh, Jim. Yeah, right. Yep. A gallon a day seems right for... Now, if you remember, I told you before, I lost maybe several hundred of those uh, bees because I waited too long to install them. But as a gallon a day, I mean, should what what I did this time is when, I, when it ran out, I let it set two days so they would hopefully go out and forage. Uh, and I just yesterday put another five gallons on there they won't gallons. pull that syrup if there's a flow on 
Okay. They might pull it if you got it on top of a high. They might pull some, but they're not going to pull it real actively. Well, I've got that nuke I told you about sitting on a bottom of a five gallon, uh, down five gallon drum, uh -huh. tied down, yeah. and then about ten feet away, I've got the uh, feeder on another five gallon drum. You might be feeding other bees too. Could be, could be. I have seen other bees around here. Yeah. Before I install mine. Okay, thank you very much. Okay. Okay, next up is Sean. Uh, go ahead, Sean. Hey, Don, how's it going? Hey. Okay. Hey, uh, so I have a couple questions. Um, one kind of proactive. Uh, before the uh, honey flow comes, should I try and get a uh, super of drawn comb out or just, I'm wanting to make bees. I don't really care about honey, but, you know, I don't want to pack everybody up too tight to where they can't move. Well, if you keep them compacted, you're going to make cells. So, you know, that makes numbers, you know, that the numbers make them a whole lot faster than the honey does. Okay. So don't worry about the supers for the honey flow. If you want the honey, put a super on, but you know, they're not going to draw cells if you give them too much room. Okay. Um, and I know that, uh, you were talking about caulk earlier, uh, had to put the girls to bed. So I was on late. Um, I have a couple feeders that have, wider gaps and what are apparently okay. I've got bees coming up into the feeder. I switched those ones out to tighter feeders, but I was wondering, if, can I put like a food grade silicone bead down the, uh, the gap to seal it? Where are you getting them coming in? You made one of the old style feeders where they're 22 degree angles? No, this is the uh, new style and- That's 90 degrees. You shouldn't be getting no leaks of bees anywhere. Well, it was actually the floor was a mistake cut. And, uh, <laughs> my helper kind of slammed the floor in, thinking that that little gap wasn't going to be a big deal. Um, I'd use latex caulking. Okay. Latex? Yeah, just regular old cheap latex. Works better than the silicon, and it's a whole lot cheaper. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Uh, that just saved me about 20 feeders. <laughs> <laughs> And a lot of work. Get a new helper. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was my dad, so <laughs> oh, mistakes. <laughs> um, and I think that's all I have right now. Okay. So thank you very much. Okay. Hey, darling. Good evening, everyone. Um, Jamie from uh, Alabama, I think, is working for a living and hasn't been able to get in on the chats. But Don <laughs> taught him well. Thank you very much. But yeah, when you start everybody. selling bees, you get busy. Oh, yeah. Oh, he sold too many bees, but uh, we should have so many problems, right? Well, uh, everybody says, they you know, they want to sell bees, but they don't know if they can sell them. Just being a student and getting that much advertising out there, you will get covered up. Yes, sir. And I am so grateful to you for what you care to do. You give of your time and your efforts uh, to help others do what they want, whether it be to uh, engage in a business or engage in their hobbies. You care to give to others, and I thank you so very much. Well, do you notice some of the students that get on here and they say the little things that I point out right away? Just the matter of how you hold your hive to and how you inspect and how you work through a hive saves you time. If you save 10 seconds on every hive, by the time you get to the end of the row, you've saved a lot of time. Not only holding your tool, but I scratched mine down. I took it on the cinder block because I listened to you. And when I got my hive tool, because I haven't got my bees yet, and I'm like, this little sucker here could hurt me. Yeah, <laughs> you know? yep, sure will. And it can. It really yep. can. I watched a video of yours where you took out a uh, house that had uh, a, the inside of a house that had bees in it for 15 years. Yep. Mm -hmm. and, and, and I also... We were fortunate enough to read. I did a, we read a Grit Magazine, a January issue 2017, mm -hmm. right? Went to the symposium. The next day, my husband hooked me up to you, and I understand why we don't do what they say to do. Because they're not natural. They're not, I mean, it, but, but that's how you understand, right? The best thing is, I think, that to understand why you do what you do. So you have to understand the other side. So with this house that you had, that you were taking the walls out, and you have the hive top feeders. Well, so many of us want to put up beehives 
in areas that are not natural to the bees. This house that you had, and we put on, on feeders and waterers, you have to have waterers. With this house that you took out, if you remember it, that it had bees in for 15 years. And you know why I did that? Because you wanted to make a video? No. no. I, I did that. For, number one, I had a student that wanted to learn how to do cutouts. And number two, everybody says, your bees won't sting you because they get to know you, which is untrue. I cut those bees out of that house that was in it for 15 years. I wasn't wearing a bee suit. It's the way you learn to handle bees. I went in there and I cut them all out and we filled up five or six nukes and took them to yeah. the house. Yes, sir, you did. Was there a water source near that house? It was a little remember? creek like in the back. It wasn't okay, a big one, but it was bees, a watering creek like. Because bees, I think that bees will put up in areas where they have a water source. That's why it's so important that when we want to put up our bees, we have to give them a water source. Right. We have a natural one. Mm -hmm. That's so important. Everybody needs water. And also, too, just to throw in, I did a testimonial before we started <laughs> and with bees, wax, and honey. I put lanolin, um, I mean, lavender oil in with the, uh, with the tea tree, the wintergreen, the lemongrass, the eucalyptus. I put lavender oil in. So I feel more like a person and not like an insect. Thank you very much. Thank you. I, I don't know how many people have watched RFD TV. Uh, probably people out west watch it more. But we had one of the producers here about a week ago and bought some nukes. He produces the Mike and Molly show on RFD TV, which Molly end up dying. So... I'm they so used sorry. to have a uh, beekeeping show on there, and he's wanting to do a documentary really? on me over here, and then maybe, hopefully, he's one of their producers and get a beekeeping program again, which yeah. would be good. How is your trademark doing? Do you have your trademark, sir? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's filed. It's all up. It's all done now. That's so very good. I am so <laughs> happy for you. Yes. Thank you very much. Okay, I know. I've taken too much time. Thank you. Blessing. <laughs> yes. There you go. Go ahead, John. Yes. John? Go ahead. You talking to me? Yes. Oh, okay. I didn't know I'd make you one. I didn't, I didn't think of it. Hey, Don, uh, one quick question. When I when I put those queens in that uh, mating mating nook, I've got some of my mini nook frames that are drawn out, and only one of them actually has honey, but most of them have nectar that is almost ready to be kept. Can I put one of those in there? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's all I have. Okay. Okay, uh, Jackson. Go ahead. She fell asleep. When you. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> I'm about asleep. That ain't no joke. Uh, when you cut queen cells out from the frames, how soon can you cut them out? I like to get them about the 14th day, 13th, 14th day. The ones that I cut tonight before I got on here was actually hatching there, and I, I lost about seven of them. And the ones that wasn't already cut down, I cut them out and put them in boxes. Is there a reason why you can't cut them out earlier? Well, for one thing, they're not fully developed and it doesn't take much to cave in the wax or to damage them. And by turning them and flipping them around a little bit, the queen is undeveloped. And if you hit her just right or turn her just right, you can damage wings, legs. It gets deformities. If you can wait to the 15th day where you have 24 hours, you could almost drop them. I, I've dropped them off of my truck seat onto the floor, and I thought none of them would hatch. And I learned that they're a little bit tougher, but they have to be developed first, almost ready to hatch. Then they can take a little bump, but it's not good to bump them. Okay. <laughs> okay, that's all. Okay, Lee, go ahead. 
Hey, Don, we were talking, you were asking me if I had any mite problems if I was treating. What would you recommend that I treat for uh, mineral oil fogging with uh, wintergreen? Well, you're going to get about a 40% knockdown, but, you know, if you use oxalic acid, you're going to have 100%. Okay. But you don't want to dribble it. You want to vaporize it. Now, if you're going to use the fogger, you can use that Everclear, and you put oxalic acid and shake it up real good. Joe May is doing that, and uh, Taro out there, out west, is doing it. Several other people are doing it. And Stephen started doing it here. He's done two treatments already. So it's a quicker way than putting that vaporizing wand in there and doing a treatment that way because you have to wait till it cools down between treatments. Yeah, the but, day I was over there, Stephen was trying that. So y'all finally yeah, got that yeah. going good? Yeah, it's it's working pretty good. I mean, it's it's fast. He does th all of them in my front yard. There's probably 300 out there. He did them all about a half an hour. Okay, Just about as fast as you can walk through the hives. But now you need to wear a respirator because those, those fumes ain't too good for the lungs. Oh, I remember that. Yeah. <laughs> that was tough. So um, how long are you having to let that set before it actually um, – dissolves yeah dissolves in the everclear uh the first batch he mixed up too much oxalic acid and had crisp okay. get granules in the bottom but he cut back the measure he's using now is 29 grams so he's doing i think it's 100 milliliters or something you know like that of everclear he bought a big bottle of it and he's done about four treatments he's still got about two ounces in there okay All and right. uh, it, it seems to go pretty fast I think that's which route I'll go. All right, thank you. Okay. Hey, Angela, go ahead. So I was last week talking a little bit about the large hive that I had inherited from uh, my my uncle. Um, I got into it this week. There were no queen cells. The very bottom box had deep, that had no like very little bee activity in it. They were there were a few drones. Uh, in it, not wasn't much going on in it at all. We've cleaned it all up, set it all back up. I have finally gotten a queen from Georgia. Um, to at least do one split on it. What's my best? They've gotten a, very aggressive since we've gotten into it and cleaned everything up. Um, very very active, but they seem to be a little feral. This hive is some a hive that survived on its own in Ohio for couple of years without anyone else touching it the hive got a little aggressive when you put the new queen in we haven't i haven't put the new queen in yet oh, oh. um I, i'm just looking for some advice for doing the split when they're being aggressive how can i kind of only want to get the new genes involved so that they can fully get a little less aggressive do you have some extra boxes nukes and stuff I don't have any nukes, but I do have a bunch of boxes. Like uh, most of them are medium 10 frames. Well, you need to go to either eight frame or, you know, if you're going to be the sole beekeeper and you have to do all the lifting and stuff, I would think about going all mediums. That way you have one size all the way through your hive. Yeah. If you're going to sell bees down the road, then you need to run deeps and mediums because there's a lot of people want deeps. There's a lot of people want mediums. But yeah. I would get you a uh, nuke box, and I'd put the queen that is aggressive in that hive. Make sure you find her. Put her in a nuke box. Put a frame yeah. of honey with her and three frames of new foundation and set her off to the side. Shake you okay. a few extra bees in there, and then requeen your hive with that new queen. Okay. Because sometimes when you get that old comb away from the queen, they straighten out. You build up a pesticides and dark black comb. At, uh, yeah. It's just like you sleeping on a mattress that had a bunch of contaminants on it. You know, you're going to wake <laughs> up not feeling good. If it's a new, fresh mattress, you know, you're just going to do better. Do I need to keep them far away from each other or close off the hive, anything like that? Well, that's one person far away is, you know, 10 miles. Me far away is three or four feet. I mean, <laughs> There's, you know, once you move them, they're going to be all right. You're going to get a certain amount of those bees. The field bees is going to drift back. But at that time, go through there and get all that dark comb out and replace it with some new foundation. Okay. That's going to be part of your cleanup mess. And have some extra boxes. You might go in there and find two or three extra queen cells. Make more splits with them. 
Sure. You don't need to be concerned. I got two packages as well with my new queen. Um, should I be concerned about having them close to that hive at this point? Or I can set them all up in a row? You can set them up in a row, but don't make them all nice, pretty white boxes. Put different colors, you know. Sure. Little, so, they know you know, yes, so they can find out where they live. Sure. You know, people, they have misconception of how many hives they can have. If you was to walk around my bee yard, you'd just look around and scratch your head. There's hundreds of hives in rows. I mean, you know, as long as you can get between the hives and work them, you know. But if, if you've got a piece of land there, you know, put them out. You know, if you've got a place where you can set them five feet apart, do five feet. That way you can weed whack around them. I just put mine on stands because it's more convenient. They're close together. I don't have to spend so much time walking from one area to the other. Right. And then my other question is, as I've been back and forth between what my end goal is in raising bees, I started even being interested because of pollination. Um, I spent a lot of hours watching your videos and got excited about just raising bees to sell. And I also have a friend who is uh, interested, he owns a meadery, is interested in buying honey. Mm -hmm. if, my, if my end goal is to make the max amount of honey, uh, to sell to this, this with a meadery, what should my strategy be for setting up my bees at this point? Well, do you want to try to make a living at your bees or you want to make a living at doing honey? Eventually, I would like to make a, a living out of both. <laughs> well, if you're going to do both, then you're going to have to run a lot of hives. Okay. And then if you start out clean, don't put chemical, do everything organic you should be able to get at least 20 to 40% more than your neighbors do for their honey. Sure. I mean, we got people that's selling quarts of honey for $8, $9, and I'm getting 25 on, you know, with comb in it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, strained honey, $20 a quart. I mean, if somebody wants to buy it cheaper, they can buy it cheaper. Right. As far as honey or selling bees, I mean, you get your 25 or 50 hives, you can make a, a pretty good living off of that. Splitting your hive and making bees. All right. That's all for me tonight. Watch watch the videos. I mean, we get a lot of my students on here and started out with 10 packages or 15 packages. And right now, they can't keep up with orders coming in. Is that true of Ohio as well? More so. Okay. See, I grew up in Ohio, and I moved <laughs> south to become a commercial beekeeper. And in Ohio, if you listen to some idiot at the bee supply house or the bee club tells you do this, do that, and then you make that mistake, you got three months to correct it. You got to right. start next year and do it over. I went through that. So that's why I spend my time trying to put people on the right road. I don't care if you buy a bee from me or a package or anything. Buy them from somebody that's reputable. Do it the right way. Yeah. There's enough out there for every, as far as where you at, I've got two students in Indiana. Joe, come down here, and then Matt is up there. Matt is buying 100, 150, 200 packages at a time. He's wow. marking them up 50 bucks on each package. <laughs> There's a lady that's down below Cincinnati. She's thinking about getting into bees. I mean, talk to some of my students. I mean, they'll tell you. Right. Get your web page put up. Uh, if you can't make your own web page, Elijah, that's what he does for a living. He'd make you a, a, a page. There he is. Good, I mean, good. You get your foot in the door. The biggest thing is buy good genetics. Believe me. You, you don't have to buy them from me. Buy them from anybody. Look at them. See if they can work them. If you got someone coming out and they wear a full bee suit and these are the bees they're going to sell you and you're not experienced, I have ladies that come over and work my bees all the time. I mean, you know, I've had students that can tell you the same thing. Get good genetics, and they'll pay in the long run. Uh huh. And when you can sell a box of bees four times a month out of that one box, how high would you stack that in honey? I mean, you'd have to stack it pretty high. Right. And people don't even think about it. When you sell honey to someone, you're at liability. If you sell them bees, you don't have liability. Oh. People don't tell you that. Right. You know, 
I've sold honey off and on probably for 60 years. I've never had a problem. But when you start getting big, you throw your label on there, and they see your label all over town and next state everywhere. Oh, this, this person's got some money. They might call you up and say, you know, I'm at the hospital. They're pumping out my stomach, and I ate your honey. Even if it's not your honey, a minimum $2,000 lawyer fees. So you got to carry a liability policy, you know. But for bees, they know they got a stinger on them. They get stuck. <laughs> it's their problem. Right. Okay, that's something to think about. Yeah, definitely. I mean, you if you want to get in business, you can talk to my students. You can talk to me. There's money to be made in it. How often? Like, how do you run your your classes? If we were to to come down from Ohio, do you do like uh, five days, or what's your I usually do one day or a whole year, a day class. Uh, if you've got basic knowledge, you can pick up on it. But if you've been keeping bees for a couple of years, you're going to spend more time on learning what you learned wrong. Right. I mean, that's, that's the whole thing. I mean, it's, it's not that hard to keep bees, but learn to keep them right to start with. Right. I can already say that I wish I would have found Don the Fat Bee Man before I <laughs> – a single piece of equipment or well, done anything. You could, you could go over to Indianapolis over there. Joe's over just below there. Matt's over there. I've got some people over in Pennsylvania. i got people all around the place. I just had a man leave here from uh, Oregon. Bought 25 nukes wow. for my stock. Drove five days out to Oregon. All you have to do is put on your webpage, you're one of my students, you got the same stock. You uh -huh. will never make these fast enough. Never. The only thing to hold you back is building boxes. I got the man to do that, so I'm all set. <laughs> he'll throw his hands up at the first a month or two, and he'll say, that's not <laughs> enough. <laughs> that's great. Well, thank you very okay. much, Doug. Right. Hey, Darlene. Oh, thank you very much. Angela, you can always find someone to make the honey for you go into the bee business. Now, I'd like to thank Mr. Don for resetting the standard. The standard on, oh, we only have three types of bees. Sir, I beg to differ. We have four types of bees. We have nurse, we have field, we have drone. And undertaker. <laughs> Blessings to all. Hope all that are in the bad weather are okay. Thank you, Mr. Don. <laughs> okay, next up is Anthony. Go ahead. Yeah, I was just wondering, Don, how many hives do you have at your house in the five yards? Well, the house yard is basically a schoolyard. My yeah. other yards, I, I have at least seven or eight close by within a half an hour to an hour driving. Those are the money yards. I only take students that's from out of town that's experienced there because uh, you can get some experienced students out in my learning yard and they can kill a couple hundred dollars worth of queens in no time flat. But it's a learning yard. It's, that's what it's for. But I was just wondering, how many do you have total altogether? Well, north, south, all around? Yeah. yeah. We got a six-hour drive, and we run a bunch of yards there, too. So we, we keep them, you know. You got a lot. Yeah, it's full okay. time. Yeah, okay. I'm just curious. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. Okay, Sean. Hey, I just wanted to say I'll be selling Don's bees in Northeast Ohio next year. See, there you go. <clears throat> that was it. <laughs> Okay, anyone else? Yeah, after you get over 100 hives, you quit counting anyway. <laughs> uh, looks like Rose got a question. Go ahead, Ro. His camera's froze up. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to unmute him and it won't. <laughs> but you know if, if people are, is thinking of this as just a part time or as a, a paying hobby it's, it's something to get in if you love the bees you'll make money 
don't do it just to make a living at it or to make money. If you don't love them, you're not going to work them. It's a daylight to dark type of thing. It's basically seven days a week. But it'll provide a living for you. People have to have housing. They have to have food. And in order to have food, you got to have bees. And Allison has a question for you. Go ahead. Well, I just I just started two new hives. Mm -hmm. And on the one hive today when I checked it, I actually found eggs. But on the other hive, there are no eggs, and they've only got a couple places where they've started pulling out comb. And I don't know if there's a queen in there or not. How is there any other way besides finding her or seeing eggs? I don't know what to do with that hive. Are you wearing a veil? No. Uh, when you open the hive, are they noisy or are they fairly quiet? They're noisy. They're real noisy? Well, how many years have you been keeping bees? Just the first year? <laughs> yeah, I, this is the first. I've had them for a week. So oh, that's okay. Well, you, you wouldn't know what noisy is then. Bees will make a certain amount of buzz. If there's no queen, they'll start to roar. But oh, okay. if you just had them a week, maybe your queen didn't get out of the cage. And another thing is if you put them in a 10-frame box with a package, they're slower to build than if you dumped them in a five-frame box. They build well, faster. Okay. The one, the one side, the one hive – was a 10 frame also, but they built out and I found eggs. It's the other one. And what I, I must have been holding my breath. And then when I exhaled, they got noisy and attacked. I really disturbed them because I breathed on them pretty heavy and they were not happy about that at all. Hmm. So they well, got me too. But. I would wait at least another week. Then I would go back in there and try to use a minimal amount of smoke. The more smoke you put, you panic the bees. So if you don't find eggs in there and everything, go to the hive you found eggs and take a frame of eggs and shake the bees off and put it back in the other hive that doesn't okay. have them. That way they okay. can make them some cells. Yeah. Well, I Where did you smoke. get your packages from? Um, from Cash, Cash uh, Bee Association in Utah. Oh, well, if the bees, you, it's possible when you get a package, you could have had a damaged queen in it. Uh, if yeah. you only had them a short period of time, I would tell them your queen's not laying. If they're reputable, they'll replace your queen for you. Oh, okay. Thank you very much. Okay, okay Ro, go ahead. Uh, yeah, sorry about that. My battery died before. I just wanted to uh, say the other night we all talked for about an hour after Don and Ezra and everybody went to bed. I just wanted to let everybody know they don't need to be in such a rush to hang up afterwards. If they want to hang out and chat. That's well, all old, I old people like me go to bed early. We work all day in the sun. <laughs> We've been making boxes all day, so my tail's dragging too. Yeah. Thank you for all the information. Okay. Hey, Anthony. Yeah, yesterday when I was doing some reading, it, it referenced another bee supply. I forget the name of it. So I clicked on it just to look at their catalog and see what they had. And it's the first time I saw anybody advertising polystyrene hives. Have you seen those, Don? I've seen them. Uh, think about in the woods, the wild bees. They don't have polystyrene hives. They don't have queen excluders. They don't have a lot of that garbage. Keep yeah. it simple, and your bees will be happier. Yeah, I wasn't thinking of buying one. It's just the first place that I saw them advertised, you know. Well, just the bee supply house has got 99 point something stuff that's in that catalog you absolutely don't need. It's a money-making gimmick that you'll buy it and then put it in a box somewhere and store it. And then you'll ask yourself, what do you buy that crap for? Yeah, that's the first thing that I would tell somebody now. And I do have two of my friends really interested now since I started. And I said, well, one thing I can tell you is I can save you a lot of money from stupid mistakes that I've already made. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's why I spend my time trying to get people started out the right way. I'm not trying to say anything except give you some good advice. 
You know, I didn't, I didn't know, and I told you before, I saw an ad for Flow Hive. So I started reading about Flow Hive, which led me into reading about bees, which led me into buying my first nuke. I only paid $368, only $368 for that Flow Hive, not the $700 if you buy it from Flow in Australia. And you know, now I found a bee supply 20 minutes from my house. I can buy an eight frame hive, brand new, all painted for $17.50. So that was an expensive mistake, and that wasn't the only one. Okay, I'll let. Let someone else ask a question if they want. Okay, Leah, go ahead. Hey, John, uh, I was watching your video about um, making boxes, and I've made friends with a local sawmill. Mm -hmm. um, about how many boxes a day do you think somebody could make with a pretty decent setup, table saw, and um, the way you make them? How many boxes can you build a day? Me, you, or who? Well, I want to be like you, so let's pretend I'm aspiring. You don't want to be like me. <laughs> <laughs> if you if you just getting started, I wouldn't try to run maximum 25 to 50 hives the first year. Get okay. your feet wet, then go next year, decide which way you want to go. Well, I was thinking about, since I've got a really cheap source of lumber, about selling some boxes at the bee club, so that's kind of why I was asking. Well... Um, if you don't have nothing else to do, I mean, you probably could make some money at it. Uh, there's people buying them. We used to sell them. My son did most of the building, and he actually stopped building because you got too much time in it, and there's too much competition out there. Okay. But if you're getting free wood and you've got nothing else to do, you know, do it until you can use that money to buy more bees. Okay. Okay, anyone else? Well done, you want to call it a night? I guess if nobody else has got a question, I must have dumbfounded everybody. They run out of questions. <laughs> no, well, you, were, you, we, you gave us so much information, we're absorbing it, and it takes a world like a relay, you know, it's, so there you different. go. <laughs> well, hope to be informed. Appreciate everybody showing up tonight and look forward to seeing everybody next week. Everybody Thanks. have a good evening. Thanks, Tom. Thanks, sir. And all of those that are in Storm's Way, may you be safe. Thank you. Thank you.